and welcome to a very special Brush and Bubbles because today we are doing an exciting collaboration with the gorgeous fashion brand Dancing Leopard. Dancing Leopard actually very kindly gifted Tiff and I a couple of dresses and I'm wearing one of them now and I absolutely love it. So what we thought we would do is do a leopard print style painting. I am so excited by this because I personally love leopard print. I grew up in the 90s listening to the Spice Girls. I still listen to them now. So leopard print is something I've always loved. And I just thought it would be a fun one for us to paint because you don't have to follow what I'm doing with mine. You can go really rogue with your colors. You can go really bright. You can go more pastel. You can even do blacks, grays, and whites if you wish. I'm gonna be doing more of like a true tone leopard print with my painting and showing you how to do that. But equally, please feel free to do anything that you like. Before we get started, I'm just gonna talk you through what you will need to create this painting. To start with, you will need a canvas. This is an eight by 10 canvas that I'll be using to do my painting on. A palette to pop all your paints in. A couple of different brushes. I've got a sort of square shaped one, which is more of a medium size, and then a smaller one, which is for all the details. Some kitchen towel, a cup of water, some acrylic paints. Like I said, I'll be showing you which ones I'm mixing up. Equally, you can just feel free to go rogue and do any colors that you wish. I've also got some masking tape here. This isn't essential, you don't have to do this bit, but what I'm gonna be doing is just masking the edges. So I give my painting a border. I quite like when I'm doing something very patterned and abstract to have a sort of border around it. But equally, you might like to wrap your painting around the side and the top, it's totally up to you. If you are struggling at the moment to get hold of any art bits, we are selling an art kit on our website and it includes the canvas, the palette, paints and brushes. So if you do want to purchase any, you can just visit our website brushandbubbles.com and we've got them all on there and we deliver straight to your door. So without further ado, let's get started. And before we do, I would just grab yourself a drink of choice so you can get nice and relaxed and enjoy this painting. Thanks guys. For this painting, I've got some white, red, yellow, tiny bit of blue and some black paint. But like I mentioned, you can use any colors that you like. To start with, I am just going to border the edges of my canvas with some masking tape. And I'm just gonna use the width of the masking tape to measure out how much I want to cover. So if you want to do that now, you can just go ahead and carefully mask out your painting, just making sure that you're really pushing it down, especially here, because this is where the paint will be touching. Once you've covered the edges of your canvas, we're now just going to mix up the colour for the background. Now this is a sort of orangey beige shade that I'm going to be going for. So for this, I'm just going to pick up my medium brush. I'm going to start by moving over some white paint to another dish on my palette. Just make sure you're adding enough that's going to cover the back section of your canvas. And then I'm going to gradually start adding a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow to this and giving it a good mix and just gradually adding in the red and the yellow until I'm happy with the shade. Once you have a sort of peachy shade, I just want to sort of dull mine down slightly. So all I'm gonna do is add the tiniest, and I mean tiniest bit of black. So with my small brush, I'm just gonna pick up a tiny amount of black and just dash it in there just a tiny bit at a time and then mix it in. Once you're happy with your shade, I would add a few drops of water, give it a good mix, and then we're just gonna go in and cover the whole background with this shade. So just be careful as you get to the edges, we just want to overlap our masking tape if you've used it, and if you haven't used it, you just want to paint all around the top and the sides. So just get that all in there and cover up the whole canvas. Once you've covered up all the back and it's nice and thick, we just want to leave it to dry for about five or 10 minutes. Equally, if you've got a hairdryer, you can just give it a little blast with the hairdryer and it'll help it dry quicker. 
Once your background is nice and dry, we're now just gonna mix up the color for our leopard spots. So for this, I would just wash your big brush if you haven't already. And we just want to mix up a brown shade. So to start with, what I would do is mix up some red, some yellow, and some blue. Just give it a really good mix in one of your dishes. Now this should give you a sort of ready brown shade. What we then want to do is just add a little bit of white to this, just a tiny amount of white, and then a tiny amount of black, like a really small amount. So I pick mine up with my brush and then dab it on my plate and then go in and mix it in. And essentially what we want to do is just start building up these colors. So I'm now just gonna go back in and add some more red, some more yellow, some more blue and give it a mix. And I'll add in a tiny bit more white and a tiny bit more black. So just mix it up until you're happy with the shade. So once you're happy with the shade that you've got for your spots, what we're now going to do is you can either use your big brush or your tiny brush or do a little dance between the both of them. But essentially, we're just going to start painting on some splodges where our leopard prints will be. Now, this is the fun bit because leopard prints come in all different shapes and sizes. We'll have some bigger ones, some smaller ones, and then some areas where they'll just be black. So we just want to start painting them in and make sure as you're getting to the side of your canvas, you want to overlap them. So what I would do is just start painting in these sort of splodge-like shapes. Again, some of them are more circular, but a little bit bumpy, and then others are sort of more of a C shape. So there's a sort of gap, so you can, you can just sort of leave like a a small gap and just be very abstract with your your spots that you're creating. Some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. Some of them are sort of like just little marks. Some of them are more like a sort of bean-like shape, so you can draw that in. A little experiment with your leopard print dots. Again, if you want to, you can pick up your small brush and go in and add a couple of smaller shapes in there. Just try to be quite free. Don't overthink what you're doing. We don't want them to look uniform. We want them to look very natural. Some might be closer together, some might be more separate. But just carry on filling in the whole of your background with these leopard print spots. Once you've got most of your spots in there, we're just going to leave it to dry and then give them another coat of paint just so that they're nice and thick and opaque and none of them are see-through. So I'm just going to give mine a quick blast with the hairdryer and then fill them all in again and then we'll move on to the next step. When your second layer is nice and dry, we're now going to go in with our small brush and some pure black paint. And we're just going to start adding some of the outlines around some of the dots. Now, when you look at natural leopard print, they don't surround the whole blob. They just surround sort of areas and then you've got dashes of black that are actually on the beige section. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start filling that in now. And to start with, I would just add a tiny bit of water to your black paint just to thin it out. I like to put some on a separate bit of my palette and then add some water to it, give it a good mix. What we're gonna do is just start adding this to some of these blobs. So you can be quite thick with your paint if you wish, 
but I'm just going to show you a few examples. So like I mentioned, they don't go around the whole blob or mark, but they just sort of go around sort of half of it, maybe wrap around some of the curves and then you can sort of move on to another one, maybe one of the smaller ones like this and some areas that might be slightly thicker and I'm actually trying to be quite wobbly with my brush. I don't want it to be too uniform or neat. We want it to look natural. So just start adding these onto your, your leopard prints. What I would suggest doing is sort of taking a step back, looking at something else and then coming back into it, just so you can sort of decide where you want the black outlines to go, where you feel like it needs it. You'll soon get a sort of feel for it as well. Some of them, for example, the sort of the black comes around the top and then comes to a bit of a peak and then wraps around half of it. And then maybe it's got a little gap and you've got some on the other side. So just have a little experiment, fill them all in, decide what you think needs filling in. And then afterwards, we're gonna go back in and add a few black areas to the sections that we've left free. Once you've filled most of those in, what we're gonna do now is go in and add a few more details. So like I mentioned before, with the black paint and still using our small brush, we can just add sort of shapes within the areas that we've left. And these are sort of extra splodges, but they're also quite triangular in shape. So you don't wanna make them too rounded. And actually what you can start doing as you fill them in is have a look at some of your splodges. And if they look a little bit too perfect and round, you can go back in and add a sort of like, almost like a point to it. So have a little look and see if any of them look a little bit not right. You'll soon sort of see what I mean. And just have a, have a little play and add a couple of more pointy edges to some of your leopard prints. Just to start building it up, adding detail, adding a few of these black sort of dashes and marks within some of the extra spaces that we've left. And it will start to all come together. Once you've added in a few more details, just make sure all of the black paint, or whichever colour you've used to do these outlines, is nice and thick and you can't see through any of it. And then what we want to do is leave it to dry nicely for about 15 minutes, or again, just give it a blast with the hairdryer before we come on and pull off the masking tape. So once your painting is nice and dry, we can then go in and carefully pull off the masking tape. You have then completed your Dancing Leopard inspired leopard print painting. I hope you all enjoyed that. And this is a really fun one to paint because if you want to, you could do a whole series of them in different shades and different colors. In fact, I actually tried out a whole array of different shades before I went with more of the neutral one. So I went for some really, really bright colors, which was really fun as well. So you can just have fun with it, do as many as you like, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks everyone, bye.